Fit like in folks, welcome back to the channel. Look what we're taking out. The BMW CE04 electric scooter. Oh. <laughs> okay, so that is recording. So sync up the 360 with the helmet cam, sync them up one, two, three. This is the game I have to play, Si. This cockpit cam, helmet cam, sync them up one, two, three. Right then folks, we're back here at Arden's in Tunbridge Wells and look what we've got to play with. Yep, we're going electric on an electric scooter. This is the 11 and a half thousand pound. Actually, this one is more like 14 and a half thousand pounds. The BMW CE04. Now look at it. I mean, it looks like a a futuristic scooter and that's exactly what it's meant to be this is the market this thing's going for you sort of t-max commuting market and that's exactly where it's aimed so today i'm taking it out on the open road with my mate si <laughs> right we are we are going to uh, head out and see what this thing's like so starting you've got to have the side stand up it's keyless i have to pull in the the brake which is on the left there's no clutch to push that's us ready to go and that is us eerily silent after you Sai and off we go now Sai is leading the way so uh, <laughs> anyone who's ever ridden with little Sai <laughs> will know who knows where we're going to end up now this thing is at 76% charge it's not at 100% sadly I'm saying we have a range of 45 miles. I'm currently in road mode. Now this thing has eco mode, rain mode, road mode and dynamic. The switch gear is all very... Oh, where's Sai going? The switch gear is all very BMW-esque. So if you've ridden any BMWs, you'll know exactly what to expect. Roundabouts handles fine. Seems very flickable. All this weight is so low down. Having said that, it's not quite. It, it seems to just pivot, but it gets to about here, and then you have to you have to give it a bit more sort of persuasion. It's like all that weight is just holding it in that sort of angle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm bored of road board. Feels a little bit gutless to me. Let's whack it into dynamic. Uh, right, so I'm pretty much flat out, 60 odd miles an hour. That is it. Will it go any quicker? Yeah, you might get 70 out of it, but I'm already down to 41 mile range. This is meant as a, an urban commuter, so this is meant not really to be out here on big dual carriageway motorways. It's not meant for motorway speeds and things. Sorry Si, that's me flat out mate. The little Si has got the 360 camera on, but um, <laughs> he, hasn't quite, he hasn't quite fathomed that he needs to be quite close to me. And every time I try to sneak up behind him, he just takes that as I want to go quicker and he zooms off. <laughs> Okay, let's get back to that price. 11 and a half grand for the standard bike. 11 and a half thousand pounds for a bike which has a full range at 100% charge of around about 80 miles. Bear in mind this is, this is meant to be riding in the cities where equivalent electric motorcycles Although, I'll give it that, the likes of the Zero and the Energy Car, they're probably twice the cost of this, actually, thinking about it. And city riding, you're going to get 200 miles with them, if that's all you're going to do. So, £11,500 for an electric scooter, charging times on this, using the AC charge cable, so it plugs into mains at home, just, you know, three-pin plug. That then plugs into this, you'll get 100% charge in, I think it's four hours, four and a half hours. If you have the fast charge kit, which this one has, again, it's another extra, which helps to bring it up to that 14 odd thousand pound mark. 
it's not three grand for the fast charge I think it's something like a grand or something like that maybe 800 quid I'm not sure but with fast charge you can get your 100% charge in I think it's an hour and 40 minutes the blurb on the website said yeah so it comes with different modes I think it's got heated grips the seat, the seat's actually pretty comfortable so far, not bad. Uh, mirrors are typical BMW mirrors, same ones you get on the GS. The ride feels lovely so far, I mean we're just on good quality tarmac here on the A21. And uh, yeah, the ride's fine. I mean there's no screen or anything on it, but I, I, I've got to say, I'm not really feeling any wind turbulence, even at the motorway speeds there. It didn't to me feel like I was getting blown off the, off the bike. Plenty of room sat here, you know, these running boards, I can put my feet right out to the front if you like doing that, or alternatively you can bring them right up close, quite a nice little setup. There's loads of cubby holes and things on this bike, there is one massive, massive glove box if you like, right under your arse, and that's big enough to get your helmet in, but that's also where you can store your cable. So it works quite well, when you're on the bike, chuck the cable in there, the charging cable, and then obviously when you stop, you want to charge the bike up, the cable comes out, you charge your bike up, and you can whack your lid in there if you want. I mean, it actually feels really quite flickable. All this weight, speaking of weight, I think, I think it was around about the 235 kilograms, I think. I'll put up on the screen now. Didn't strike me as massively heavy, but then I suppose it is quite a small bike. But anyway, all that weight with the batteries, it's literally below your feet. It's, it's like four or five inches above the ground, which is why it feels so flickable. But then when you get to roundabouts and you need to lean that little bit further, it's a little bit like a weeble. You know, it's, it's really comfortable pivoting like that. But if you want to just kick it that little bit further, you just have to give a bit more body input and it will go round, it's fine. You don't actually need to use the brakes. You can just ease off the power and the regen on it does the job for you. I've not, I don't think I've had to use the brakes yet. Speaking of brakes, obviously there's no clutch. So you have a, the left handlebar, the left brake there, that's your rear, and the right is your traditional front. Got up to 73 miles an hour now, slight downhill, down to 32 miles already. And we've definitely not come 13 miles yet. <laughs> Now, someone I have noticed, obviously Sai's leading the way here and he's got a sat-nav. I was looking and thinking, where the heck would I mount my ultimate add-ons sort of phone case? There's nowhere to mount it on this, is there? I think the idea behind that, it's got the lovely great big screen like the um, new RTs have. And if you use the BMW Connected app, you can have turn-by-turn -turn navigation on that screen. But if you're like me and you use something like Kalimoto, then you're probably going to have to rely on the voice navigation, which I hate doing. I like to see where I'm going. Oh, just made it before the solids. Yeah. We're going to Bodium Castles, a lovely calf there. I'll treat a little side to some brekkie. Well, more like brunch now, actually. I was late for a change. I was late. But this is not a bad place to be. Really not bad at all. I've actually not ridden the likes of the, the T-Max and those, those sort of bigger style commuters, commuting scooters. But this here is just not bad at all. That's Wee Sai that I set up my touring company Chicken Strips with. He's not actually managed to come away on any tours <laughs> as yet. And I can't send Sai away by himself because he's got zero sense of direction. He's just a fantastic rider and a fantastic bloke. Really is a nice lad. Sai isn't the Sai who I'm doing the Scotland tour with. That's Simon Weir, who is another fantastic bloke. Uh, Simon Weir is the sort of root guru. He's the chap that wrote Bikers Britain, Bikers Europe, used to write for Ride, MCN. Lovely fella. This is not bad, you know. I'm quite enjoying this. Very relaxing. Well, it's relaxing until you look down and look at your range and then go, shit, 26 miles. Oops. Now, that battery wise, the CEO 4, it uses the same batteries, battery technology, as the uh, bigger electric BMW cars, the IE series. So it's not like this is new technology, it's, it's tried and tested stable technology. I suppose when you buy one of these, you've got the sort of peace of mind that it is BMW. So you do have that roadside recovery, you do have the dealer network globally, and that'll be a peace of mind for me, for sure. Nationals! 
nice. It's not got the same acceleration as you know your zeros and your energy cars for sure. In fact, I don't I don't feel like it's anywhere near most motorbikes. It's not slow, but it's not rapid as you'd come to expect. Okay, using those brakes. Yeah, brakes feel good. Nice, let's see what it's like on these type of roads then. So this is a bit bumpier. It's not unbearable. Suspension's dealing with it quite well. Your vision's brilliant. You've got no screen or anything in front of you. Dash is nice and easy to read. Win windows, mirrors are nice and easy to um, view. So yeah, ergonomic wise, great. It's not overly engaging. I mean, I literally do feel like I'm just sat twisting, monitoring a throttle, which is basically all I'm doing. But it's, it's certainly relaxing. You're gonna have to go some to get busted for speeding on this, that's for sure. <laughs> it's not as engaging as a proper, a proper bike. That sounds bad, I don't mean it to be derogatory like that, but do you know what I mean? It's not as engaging as like other electric motorbikes that I've, I've ridden. But then this has got very small wheels. It's a different sort of riding position. It's a different ergonomics. It's not going to ride like a traditional motorbike. If you come from your scooter background, then yeah, you'll be used to this. Oh yeah, that, that deceleration when you um, when you uh, roll off the throttle, it is like using the brakes. You just do not need the brakes. Mind you, a lot of electric bikes are like that, and it's probably because I'm in dynamic as well. Let me, let me whack that in. So in rain mode. Yeah, rain mode. Rain mode, there's not as much regen, not as much sort of engine braking, if you like. So when I roll off the throttle, see we're just, so I have to use the brakes much more in rain mode. I thought that, I wondered if these riding modes would affect the regen. So obviously when you put it in dynamic, the second you come off the throttle, it's engaging maximum, maximum uh, regen. Yeah, you feel it straight away. Yeah, it is almost like you're dragging a brake. Podium Castle, and we have 23 mile range. So, let's see, you never know, this place might have an electric charge. Let's have a look. Castle, tea room. Just go here, mate. Off. Off. So you'd stand down. And there we go. So yeah. Have a little look in the sunshine. This is the this is the glove box. Look. Yeah, maybe I have to switch that on. See that? Apparently you can get a lid in there, but that's where you chuck your cable and then it charges in there so that's where you chuck your charging cable but you can see that's not fast DC charge, that's AC uh, oh, it's got a little power source there what is that? Oh, it's a DIN socket, BMW always do that they put DIN sockets on, nobody uses DIN anymore but they've got that um, oh, USB-C charger there, you can put your phone in, that's pretty cool hmm, so that's it right, so the next thing We've got to try and find somewhere to charge it up. See you, mate. Okay, so this has a reverse, believe it or not. So to put it in reverse, you uh, push the R, push and hold the R, and see the R comes up on the screen there. And then you use the throttle to come back. And now I've got to get back to Arden BMW. The range says 24 miles. According to Google Maps, I'm having to use Google Maps on this, I can't afford to do the twisty Cali route. I've got to get there. It's 18 miles to get to Arden. So, let's see. Now I'm hoping my phone is synced up via the cardo to give me voice directions. Otherwise I will get lost. Turn right. There we go. Right, turn right. Thank you Mrs. Google. It's blooming hot, I'll tell you that. 23 degrees. I was having a little chat with we Sai there, and yeah, I think I have been a little bit unfair on it in regards to cost. I mean, don't get me wrong, 11 and a half to 14 odd grand is a lot of money. But I think this is aimed at your, your BMW crowd, your city workers, a bit of extra cash. They want to fly the flag as the sort of eco-warrior type. Go, that was nationals, do their bit for the old environment. I suppose, this makes sense for them in that sense. You can even put a pillion on the back here. Don't know if I'd want to be pillion because you're sort of just perched on the back there. It's almost like an afterthought. <laughs> but this quarter of a mile, 
turn right. Thank you, Mrs. Google. She, her, him, they, whatever you want to be called. Don't get me started. Turn right. I am turning right, don't worry. You really don't need brakes. You genuinely don't need brakes. <laughs> Crips Corner. Where do the bloods hang out? Oh, topical, topical smart. Continue on Junction Road for one mile. I will. Now, I never normally do this. I never normally rely on voice navigation. I switch all that off normally. Certainly when I'm using Cali, I don't use it. People have, have mentioned to me that the voice navigation on Cali Moto can be a little bit slow. Well, you, you can speed all that up. And I'll do a vid on that showing you how. So check out the Cali playlist and see if I've done that vid yet. It'll be in there. So look, that's me. This is us on the National. And that's me sat at 60. It's perfectly fine. In half a mile, turn left. Okay, I will, thank you. Has this got cruise control? No, there's no cruise control, but I mean, do you need it? Those heated grips, do they work? Oh, it's even got a heated seat, look at that. Now, is it this Turn lift? Left onto Merriman's Lane. Oh, it is this lift. Yeah, so not only does it have heated grips, it also has a heated seat. And again, you don't need brakes. Continue on Merriman's Lane for one and a half miles. Now, this is coping fine, suspension wise. Coping fine with these sort of bumpy back lanes, no real cause of concern, but I still maintain this is not what this bike is meant to do. This is an urban bike, this is for town and city riding. And I'll be honest with you, folks, I'm not sure if we're actually going to get to that type of riding. I should have taken this into the town. I got a little bit excited, to be honest with you. Went, oh, I'm going for a ride. I should have plotted a route through towns. Not the best environment to go out riding on a bike, but that's what this bike is designed for. It's a commuter, isn't it? But I'll tell you, this thing is incredibly nimble. I mean, it really is. You will have no issues at all with this, trying to filter through the traffic. It's long, it's thin, the weight is at 230 odd kilograms. Everything is below your feet. It really, it acts like a weeble, you know, it, it literally just pivots like that, no problem. I think you would almost forget that you need to put your feet down when you come to a stop. It'll be one of those type of bikes. If you want to see what it's like charging an electric bike up, I've done umpteen different vids on electric bikes. So you watch any of them and that'll show you, you know, the charging process. The main issue these days with electric chargers is, is it going to be available? And the other thing is, is the charger actually working? That's, that's something we found on um, Motorbike TV. Is that a lot of these charging points, they're not really maintained to any degree. That's quite nice. I like this, sitting with my feet straight out. I think maybe I've done too many Harley reviews now. I'm getting used to this. Do 50 miles an hour, you numpty. That's a good thing about these runner boards down here. With my feet out the front there, my, my lower back was just starting to get a little bit sort of tweaky. In a quarter of a mile. Sorry, we were interrupted. Yeah, so because I've got these runner boards, I can change my feet position if I want. And um, it sort of gives you a new lease of life. Now, Heavy's going to cut lanes, isn't it? Give them a bit of space. If you've watched the bike safe vids and I give a commentary, I talk about heavies. Heavies are things like lorries, trucks, anything like that. Now I'm not going to go crazy here because I am getting down to the 26% battery. I'm assuming this is going to be like the other electric bikes. With them, once you get below 20%, performance is severely restricted. So ideally with electric, electric you want to keep between sort of 20 and 80% charge and you top up fairly regularly and often and that way, certainly with the, the likes of Energica and Zero bikes, with those fast charges, you can get away with a quick 5 minute, 10 minute blast and you know, off you go again. Exit the roundabout. I have done. But people nod and I'm on a scooter, an electric scooter, but they won't nod when I'm on a GS. Everyone's got GS's now. I know everyone used to say it. They used to call GS's clittery spikes, didn't they? Because everyone had one. <laughs> well, it seems these days everyone has a GS. They're everywhere. I don't like being one of the crowd. Am I going to have to change? I don't want to change though. I, I like my tractor. And there's the new ones coming out. Oh, the 1300, the 1300 Sport. And what's this whispers about the 1400? 1400! I don't know what to do because 
old Heidi, my tractor, her three year finance is due next June. So I'm gonna have to get another bike. But I don't really want to get one of the new ones straight away because, you know, they might have issues. New bikes tend to have issues and I'd, I'd rather let everyone else do the, the, the gutter work for the first six months and sort all the problems out. And then I just swan up and I pick one up that's perfect. I might have to throw myself on the sword and go for one of the first ones. We'll see. I might be unemployed by then, you never know. Oh, we're down to eight miles. 17% charge. I don't think we're more than eight miles away. I'm getting a bit nervous now. I've got to admit, I was a little bit cocky when we first set off and thought, ah yeah, plenty. Plenty of room for error. Mm -hmm. We are going to be very close. Charging level low, travel to travel uh, charging station. I am, it's called Arden BMW. I'm going to have to just sit at about 50 now. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. Sorry, everybody. Sorry. Oh God, am I going to have to push this? <laughs> Oh my god, my phone's disconnected now. One, I know where I am. Nikki. Oh, she's back. Hi. Take Hi, Google. The on the left. What exit? Oh, I can't afford to get it wrong. Oh no! I missed what she said. So you can see, look, see, sitting at sort of below 60, it's been stuck on seven miles for a while now. Once you get over 60, that's when it really starts eating, and that's eating your battery. And that's the same in the uh, Energicas, the Zeros. Now, are we coming off on this one? Tell me. She's not said anything. Oh no, it was that one. It was that one. Oh my god. What a mistake. Oh no. In a quarter of a mile, take the exit to oh. Oh. oh god, no, it wasn't. Thank god for that. I felt sick. Take the exit towards Pembury. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Oh, thank god for that. We've got five miles range. We're down to 11%. It's nice, it's very agile, very, very agile. Just the range is pants. And I'm not particularly impressed with the charging times. With a range of 80 miles, you should be able to get this thing charged in 20 minutes if you get the fast DC charge. Right, so here we are, back at Arden's. So, what am I thinking? Well, folks, I mean, what can we say? Well, I think for the market that this thing's meant for, for the towns, for commuting, um, it does the job for sure, you know, with an 80 mile range, as long as you've got somewhere to charge it when you get to work, then uh, why not? You know, 11, 11 to 14,000 pounds, it's a lot of money, but then what's your competition? The T Maxes, what are they running at? They'd probably be around about similar, I would think, for a brand new one. In terms of a bike, you know, if you want to go and do what I've just done there, no, this, this thing is severely, severely restricted. But uh, that's not what it's meant for. So, make your own mind up. Take one for a spin, see what you think. Yeah. Contact your local BMW dealership, tell them you saw it on Teapot One, and uh, arrange a little test ride, see what you think. All right, folks, massive thanks to Arden for giving us a loan of this. If you want to see any more uh, vids I've done on electric, check some of these out. In the meantime, keep doing your thing, look after those that you love, get one out there whenever you can, but most importantly, most importantly, live your life. Woo-ha!